welcome to another sunny side design video i am steph and i am michelle we wanted to ship lap the ceiling well we meaning i so that's what we're going to show you today and we're not going to focus on installation per se as much as you're going to learn from all of my mistakes the things i made do. along the way so that you can save time because we wasted a lot of time you don't want to miss it so stay tuned and make sure that if you like this video and it's helpful that you subscribe tap the bell like it whatever you need to do and give um, a thumbs up gives a thumbs up that's the word i needed <laughs> first off as mentioned before my hubs did not want to do this ship off ceiling especially because there was actually such a huge language barrier between us and the guy who did our sheetrock work that he accidentally finished our ceiling and we weren't going to do that because we were going to shiplap so in my husband's point of view why would we put shiplap on a ceiling that's already done let me also just preface by saying that we have installed shiplap before we did learn a few things during that project that we thought okay we'll use this knowledge the next time we do it to better it but the one thing I did not take into consideration is that we were actually using different materials for this project. So I was kind of comparing what we had done the time before, not thinking we might have to do it differently. Mistake number one. So there's also obviously more than one way to install shiplap. And let me also just say there is true shiplap versus so many DIY versions of faux shiplap. So let's talk about that. You can buy true shiplap at your local home improvement store. They come in pre-cut planks and they overlap, which for a true shiplap, it was for a waterproof barrier for the side of a ship. That's where it gets its name. So a true shiplap board is meant to overlap. They're already pre-cut, typically pre-sanded. You can even get them pre-primed. So there's a lot less prep work you need to do other than install and paint. Faux shiplap, on the other hand, is just a way that DIYers have come up to give the appearance of true shiplap using different materials. So there are multiple different things you can use here. There's tongue and groove, there's V groove, there's MDF cut down into strips, utility plywood. There's even been people to use a Sharpie and draw the plank lines on the wall to make it look like shiplap. So there's obviously a ton of different things you can do to create this look and the, we will talk about the pros and cons of each. Our choice of material this time around was a four by eight foot piece of utility plywood. They're about eight, an eighth of an inch thick, so they're really thin, they're kind of flimsy, they bend a little bit. Essentially, we used our table saw and ripped, made rip cuts in each board. We were able to cut each sheet of plywood down into six strips about eight inches wide. So a couple of tips with this. You will need a couple of people because you don't want to cut any fingers off. It's always wise to just have some other people helping hold the wood. We also did learn because the wood is flimsy that it was actually easier to cut about three pieces at a time. We just stacked them on top of one another, made sure all the edges were flush so that we would cut nice straight lines and we would feed it through that way. So if you're going to be cutting your own strips of wood, just be mindful that this does take extra time. Um, don't try to rush it. And again, you, you need to be safe around tools like this as well, but um, it is definitely a money saver. So we needed about 26 boards of this utility ply which ended up costing under $300 for us for wood for the entire ceiling. So that's quite a large difference in cost. After we had all of the boards cut, we took them down into the basement and sanded all of the edges. So this was where our first mistake occurred. I was comparing this project to the one we had done before. However, the wood we got before, we had custom cut at a wood mill, so it was already pre-sanded, it was smooth, it was great. So with this, we focused the sanding more on 
the top side of the wood or the side that would be showing on the ceiling and then just the tip of the edge um, just to get off any rough edges or splinters. We did not sand the actual side edges of these boards, the eighth of an inch thick piece. And that was a big mistake and it cost us a ton of time in the, all of the finish work. So we'll get to that. Now the actual install process itself went pretty smoothly. So we're gonna walk you through that a little bit, not going into too much detail because it's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll show you the tools we used and our method for hanging it. And we'll also still continue to point out the mistakes we made so you can save time. So our plan is to have two sets of bookcases on this side of the fireplace and two over here. So we're not going to worry about having the ship lap go all the way to the back wall because the bookcases will be there and you won't even see it. So our plan is to start in the front of the fireplace wall right there. We're going to start by making a chalk line all across the ceiling just to make sure we have a nice flush square line to start with. So our plan is to line the chalk line up with this box we have in the ceiling. This is going to hold our theater screen. So we're just gonna start with it there to give us our, I need a little more honey. I am so not there, is that better? That look good? Now we're just lining up the measuring tape from our first chalk line. We're measuring four feet out just to help make sure that we're keeping our rows nice and straight as we go along. So we're going to use liquid nails to adhere the um, plywood to the ceiling and then we're going to tack it into place with our pneumatic brad nailer but the nails is really what's going to hold it on long term so we're going to just apply this over the whole board placement of the first board isn't as important as intentionally staggering the seams as each row is installed. We installed the first piece in the middle of the ceiling right along the edge of the movie screen box. So we measured the middle of the box and then measured out four feet on each side since our piece was eight feet long just to help us know exactly where we needed to put it. After securing it into place with the pneumatic nail gun, we then took a measuring tape and measured how long each board would need to be on both sides of that one. And we just began working our way row to row and then we just made sure to stagger the seams as we moved back. We used our chop saw for the majority of the cuts, but to get the boards to fit exactly, around the HVAC vents and the light fixtures, the video screen box, we did end up using some other tools, the jigsaw and the rotary saw. And we actually installed um, the boards right over the light fixtures themselves. We used the can light template that came with them, traced it on the ceiling so we knew exactly where we needed to cut. We finished about a quarter of the ceiling today. We worked um, six hours maybe. So just to kind of give you an idea how long this takes, I mean, we are slowed down a little bit when we get to those speaker holes and holes for the lights, but it's coming along. 
day number two of work, we were able to get 21 rows installed. So we made better progress, but we also have less holes to work with through there. We've just got this little bit to do and then over here and we are going to be done, hopefully today. I would say the biggest mistake by far that we made was assuming that our paint sprayer would paint inside the grooves. When we installed the shiplap walls before, we installed it all and then painted after and we realized how hard it was to paint inside the grooves. So we thought, well, okay, it probably is good to either be pre-painted or maybe a paint sprayer would work better. However, we were using tile spacers that were about an eighth of an inch thick, um, like a nickel gap, it's sometimes referred to as, and it was just small enough that it really was not getting the paint in there. And just working overhead as well, we just ran into several issues with the sprayer with clogging issues, flow issues. So it just, it was not working. We spent three different work days, about six hours each, just priming the ceiling alone. So 18 hours just priming, yeah. But it wasn't until we moved on to our first coat of paint that we realized we were able to see it better that the paint was not actually getting into the grooves. I was freaking out because <laughs> I thought, this is going to take forever. Let me just explain a little bit about this paint sprayer too. So don't get me wrong, our sprayer works great. I love it. It has worked for so many other projects really well. Uh, just the fact that the shiplap was smooth, I wanted to maintain that smooth surface. And our sprayer actually has two different spray nozzles. One is more of a detail nozzle, which sprays out in a little bit more of a fine flow. It doesn't put as much product out at a time. It's really great for small projects, painting furniture, things like that. We've used it, love it, it works great. Our other sprayer on the other hand is meant to spray more at a time. So it's better for doing large surface areas like walls and ceilings. So this one though sprays out enough that it sprays in a texture. And I did not want that texture on the shiplap ceiling. And so we opted to use this fine detail nozzle. And that's why it took so long <laughs> to just apply the primer alone. And then when we realized that it wasn't even getting inside the grooves, I just thought, okay, we can't do that anymore. It was so frustrating, so time consuming that we had to come up with another plan. Once the shiplap ceiling had been installed, we went around and used our putty knife and this pink putty and filled in all of the holes made by our Brad Miller. Yes, this took some time and we knew it would, but it needed to be done. So there were a few areas where we had to use a hammer and a nail set just to drive the nails in a little bit farther. But for the most part, we just had to putty in the holes. Once the putty was dry, we just took a wet washcloth and wiped away the excess and we were ready to paint. So here you can see in the image that the grooves don't have any paint in them at all. It was not getting in there. You can also see that the edges are a little bit rough because we didn't do the sanding there. And so I wasn't really happy with the look. My first idea to remedy this problem was taking a paintbrush and painting inside each of these grooves, which I was dreading because it was gonna take forever. <laughs> but look at the picture again. Paint is definitely in there, but because the wood had these rough edges, it just basically soaked that paint right up. And as it dried, it left these black areas, which made it just look like a sloppy paint job. And I wasn't happy with that either. Even after applying two to three coats, and, and mind you, I wasn't doing this on the wholesaling. I was just doing a small area to test, to see what method was gonna work. But even after doing another couple of coats, it still looked like this. So I thought, well, this is not gonna work either. One of the steps that we were planning to do was to caulk around the perimeter of the ceiling where the shiplap met the wall. And 
we did do that. Now, to kind of fix this problem with all the gaps, we have the idea to run a bead of caulk in the groove, not to fill in the groove, obviously, because that's what gives Shipwap its fun character is that groove. But rather, we filled it in the groove and smoothed it out. And it was just the intent to smooth down those rough surfaces. And then it was a better smooth surface for the paint to be applied. So you can see here in this image that, yes, this step did look a whole lot better, but sheesh, the whole idea of even having to caulk every single row of this shiplap ceiling, you guys, oh, so much time, learn from my mistakes, send your wood. Ultimately, we did end up spraying the ceiling with the spray nozzle that put out more paint at a time, and then we used a 3 8 inch nap roller to roll out a smooth surface. So the sprayer did apply the paint much quicker, and then we just used a roller to get that smooth finish that we were after. So we worked with about three rows at a time, rolling or spraying and then rolling, um, and we did that and it was much quicker. Overall, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Just frustrated that it took a lot longer than we thought. All right, we want to hear from you. What do you think of this project? Were Would... we insane? <laughs> <laughs> well, the sheer volume of what had to be done was a lot of work. And a big space. It, yeah, right. And so it, it took a long time. But I know sometimes we're a little crazy in taking on this and you saw the, not really the mistakes, but maybe the steps that we should have taken instead of um, what we did do that would have been helpful. So is were, this, were we crazy? Yeah. It took forever. <laughs> <laughs> would you do it? It did. And you know, your arms get tired when you're working oh, overhead. Your neck, your, your, neck, your it was It was hard work. So would you ship lap the ceiling? So once you see what it looks like, was this something you would do? So overall, I think it looks really awesome down here and it does add some visual interest to the room. And I think it's gonna be awesome when the whole room is finished. Yeah. And we do plan to install some really cool looking beams. It's just gonna to add to the whole character. So even though it was a ton of time, I am happy we did it. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> yeah, we're all glad it's over, especially that painting process. Yeah. That was probably the hardest part of the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, because install time went pretty smoothly. I mean, it took yeah. time, but all that after finish work took forever. All right, so Lee, drop us a comment. Tell us what you think. If you could have thought of a better way to do this, yes, let share. us <laughs> know, because we are always looking for better ideas. We're not, you know, we're just average DIYers. We're not professionals, but we're trying to make it work on our budgets. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here with us. Again, like this video, subscribe to our channel. We love having you here and follow us on our social media. All the links are down below. And as always here at Sunnyside Design, we hope to bring your home to the sunny side of the street. <laughs>